did not obey the sound of the shofar. Verse 5. He that heard the sound of the shofar and did not take warning, his blood will be upon himself. But he that does take warning will be delivered of his being. <laughs> So the watchman is sent to bring deliverance by warning the people. What you heard today were two prophetic warnings. To stop playing the blame game, I'm talking to people around the world, and blaming the woman you gave me, she, she's did it. The husband you gave me, he's the one. No, you change. You change, you become the right person, and he the watchman calling of Yahweh in the camp, in the Kehillah. Amen. Now, we talked about that earlier today in the Parsha, Hebrews 3rd, 13, 17. Go with me, please. To, just to rehash, Ephraim 13, 17. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. I love what, what I'm teaching. Things are happening. Things are flowing around, flying around, moving around. Can't say we run dead services. Ephraim, papers falling, coffee cups spilling. <laughs> Tambourines coming apart. Ephraim 13.7. Ephraim 13.7. Remember those who lead you, who have spoken to you the word of Yahweh, Amen. whose outcome follow. Imitate their misvot and emunah. Okay? Who have spoken the word of you. Remember those. And then later on it talks about being guarded in verse 17. Look. Listen to your spiritual leaders, not because they're right, not because they're perfect, and obey them. Why here? Because they watch for your being. They watch for your soul. Yahweh will ask me, what happened to her? Why did she fall away? Why did he fall away? What could you have done differently? How could you have done it differently? So we are watchmen. We are watchmen over the people of Yahweh. Are we not? So when Yahweh... When I go to be with Yahweh, he's going to ask me for each one of you. What about her? What about him? Why didn't you watch over them? Why didn't you do a better job? Why didn't you follow up? Why did you forget about them? Why didn't you pray for them? You talked about their relationships, but you didn't do anything to, to help them. Can I hear a good amen? amen. So the spiritual teachers, leaders, are watchmen over the flock. The watchers of the night were originally three in number. We just read this. In the beginning, Lamentations 2.19, the middle, Judges 7.19, the morning, Exodus 14.24, we just gave examples, which extended, well, let's not cover that. However, in the Brit Hadashah, we read of how many watches? Four. So the question is, if the Jewish people didn't introduce the fourth watch, who introduced the fourth watch? Yeah, sure. Not today. I don't think the rooster crowing was considered an efficient way to tell time. Matter of fact, I'm going to prove it. Even though morning prayers in Judaism to this day, those of you who are familiar with Judaism or are about to become familiar with Judaism, the morning prayers can take a bless, uh, contain a blessing and it is to be said when one hears the rooster crowing. And it goes like this. Blessed are you, Yahweh Elohim, who gives the rooster understanding to differentiate between day and night. Hey! Blessed are you, Yahweh Elohim, the king, you give the rooster wisdom to differentiate between the day and the night. The What's it called, Danny? Shachve. Shachve. You sound like rock'em, sock'em, robots. <laughs> Danny, see a nice Yiddish cup from Israel. And this guy's got, no, you see, why, you see why I'm his friend? I need him every once in a while to tap into that flow. So the prayer is found in the Jewish prayer book in the morning service. It is based on the law of Rambam, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, Maimonides. In his book, the Mishnah Torah, the Deuteronomy Code, entitled Love, where there are laws concerning prayers and the blessings of the priests. No association is made between the crowing of the rooster and the time for blowing the shofar. The question of time is vital in Judaism and would never be left to an arbitrary method like roosters crowing. Hebraic culture 
is all about time. Yeshua came at the set time. The Ruach HaKodesh came at 50 days during the counting of the Omer. Yeshua ascended to the Father on the 42nd day of the counting of the Omer. The resurrection of the Son of Yahweh took place on the second day of the counting of the Omer. So everything is done in times and seasons which is key and which is crucial for Hebraic reckoning. In Hebraic reckoning we don't remember the beginning, the birthday, we remember the day of one's blessed yeah. memorial exactly. and passing. We reckon our days as from the passing of Yeshua, so many years from the passing of Yeshua, so many years from the passing of the Messiah, never from his birth. Only the heathens emphasize birthdays. You want to have a birthday cake? Don't tell me, all right? That's between you and Yahweh. But don't emphasize birthdays, all right? Because that's not Hebraic culture. So time, time is key to understanding the word of Yahweh. Because all the Moadim are centered around what? Time and timing. Without timing, we can't even celebrate the Moadim, the Shabbat. What is the Shabbat? The seventh day of the week. It's all about timing, timing, all about timing. No timing, no Hebraic culture. No timing, no Bible. So do you really think Yeshua and the leaders of Israel would trust timing to such an unreliable animal who's got his own mental hang-ups and his own mental problems. You know, roosters have problems. Roosters have mental problems. And I can prove it to you. <laughs> and I can prove to you that. Because I'll prove it to you in a second. Okay? So do you really think the entire nation of Israel would begin Shavuot when they heard the, the, the cock crow? Do you think they'd come to the Pesach? Oh, I heard the cock crow! You heard the Pesach! <laughs> Did you hear the voice of the cock? Pesach has begun. Israel is too smart. Israel is too word focused, word centered, to d develop their whole life and their whole culture around a rooster crowing or a rooster not crowing. Turn to your neighbor and said, Don't crow on me right now, please. <laughs> Not now, anyway. Wait till the wine comes out. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So according to the Bible, the sun and the moon are given to man. Remember I told you I don't know the reason for this message. Just let it go. The sun and the moon are given to man as instruments for timing, for fixing time. Yahweh never gave roosters in Genesis chapter 1. If you read carefully Bereshit chapter 1, you will see that the roosters were not hung in the sky to help us determine the times and the seasons. We have this, the greater light, the sun, and the lesser light, Hayareach, the moon, to give us times, Moadim, fixed appointed seasons. Okay. Yahweh left nothing to happenstance. Yahweh left nothing to circumstance. Yahweh left nothing to roosters because he did not hang a rooster in Genesis chapter 1. Mm -hmm. To determine the time Yeshua would go to the cross and thus subsequently rise and thus subsequently ascend and thus subsequently return all based around the cock-a-doodle doing of a shmeckle or whatever that idiot, uh, rooster goes. Yahweh doesn't do that. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Turned your neighbor and said, I can't believe he's using Yiddish. <laughs> there is no rooster in Genesis chapter 1. You could read it even in the Jerome translation. You could even read it in the Latin, you won't find the rooster. No. So you're going to tell me Yeshua came and he said, when you hear the rooster crow three times, don't worry about it, you'll have denied me already two times. What kind of a watchman is that? <laughs> Kind of, the only thing that kind of a watchman does is lay eggs and poop. It's not a watchman. That's not the, that's not the kind of watchman Daryl was telling, was telling us that Yahweh was raising up. Roosters don't lay eggs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he applies, okay, so, so the moon and the sun are how we fix our times. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Now, in the time of Yeshua, how did people tell time? In that time there was no Swiss nation, didn't have Swiss watches. In the time of Yeshua, 